We have to get our mind focused on the Lord. Yes. Men often fail, but God never fails. And there are times that in man's failure, that there comes a point where men hinder the desire of God and what he wants to do because of things that are in their life. Saul had a tremendous promise to become king over Israel in the lineage, but because of his failure, his lineage ended. Eli um, had the promise that his lineage would go forever, but because of his lack of being the father that would deal with the sin of his sons, he lost it, and Samuel picked up the mantle. And over and over again, we see the story of Solomon, who God greatly blessed, but because of, of Solomon's failures in the end of his life, Israel was divided and only a portion went on to him. How you act carries a lot of weight in your future, your lineage, and everything that happens. The promises of God are absolutely true. Well, I want to say this, that when people truly repent and turn their hearts back to God, God is willing to return the blessing back to them. I'm sorry I feel this this morning. I'm not exactly following my notes. It happens when I get drunk in the spirit. 
David was, was a case in point. David totally messed up. Pronounced death on his own head without realizing it. But because of his repentance, God restored him. Repentance is the key to all restoration. Amen. I didn't just say saying I'm sorry, I'm, I'm saying repentance. Because repentance. For when we offend somebody, we say, I'm sorry that I offended you. But it doesn't necessarily mean I did anything wrong. I'm just sorry I offended you. Does that make sense? And by the way, if I have offended you, you deserve to hear from my lips, I'm sorry. You follow what I'm saying? I care about that. Um... I don't deliberately do that, but I have said stupid things in the past. And the spirit of stupid is still floating through the atmosphere. And, uh, man, I listened to it on the internet this week. Said it restarted his broadcast, and he says, I won't tell you who it is, but uh, he said, I... He said, unfortunately, uh, the guy that puts it on the air didn't realize that I'd started it over again because my flesh was showing. <laughs> <laughs> we all have flesh. We all have failures. But it's what we do with it Amen. that makes the difference. Yes. Amen. It's how you deal with your own failures that determines whether the blessing of God remains on you Amen. or whether it departs on you. But, let me say this, God's Word is all-powerful. And the promise of God, when God gives a promise to His people, in the promise is the allocation of power for the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, in and and let me let me just say this: sometimes when the power of God moves on a man or a woman in a dynamic way, you can feel the anointing and the power of the word which sometimes leads you to set a date on it that should not be set but you feel like it's going to happen yesterday but nevertheless the word of God when given is destined Destined for fulfillment. It will be fulfilled precisely in the degree to which we are faithful and have faith in the word of the Lord. So when God gives you a word, and you received a promise. If you want to see it fulfilled, stay in faith. Come on. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence. And when we do not stand in faith, We hinder God. Okay. Let's go to, I'm going backwards in my notes. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10.
verse 35. And it says this, Therefore, are you good? Do not, therefore, <laughs> cast away your confidence, which has great reward. What, what is it that has the reward? The confidence in the word of the Lord. Yes, amen. And then he says, for you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you will receive the promise. When a word of the Lord is given, the next thing that comes is endurance. Remember I was talking about the word of the Lord comes and we're in Egypt, we receive a word of the Lord and what's the very next place we end up? The wilderness. What does it take to get out of the wilderness? Obedience and faith get us into the promised land. Amen. Glory to God. I don't think God recorded it for any other reason. So, if you want to kill the promise of God, just doubt it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And accuse the prophet of not knowing what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And shame him. Mm -hmm. But to those that hang on, look at this uh, Hebrews 3. Uh, I'm going to start at 16, I think. Or how about 15? Let's we'll start there. It's all good. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. He's talking about when God gave the word of the Lord to the Israelites, they saw the land. And Israel rebelled against the word of the Lord, saying, No, God, you're not able to take us into the land. Okay? Uh, verse 16. For who, having heard rebel, indeed, was it not all those who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And I, I think literally it, it's interpreted dismembered bodies scattered, bones scattered in the wilderness. In verse 18, and whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but to those who did not obey? Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of Here's the pattern of the Lord. God gives the word. You either receive it and plant it in your heart and nurture that word, or you reject the word of the Lord. Amen. Yep. But what does it take to produce the fruit of the reward? It takes faith and say, God, I have that promise. I receive that promise. I claim that promise. That promise will come to pass. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Worship. Amen. Praise God. Are we good? Yes. God, you will fulfill your word because there is power in your word. Yes. Amen. Um, Glory to God. Luke. Chapter 1. The angel is speaking to Mary. She's wondering how she's going to have the Son of the Highest. And verse 36, Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, is also conceived a son in her old age, 
And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. The testimony of another fulfillment brought faith to the next fulfillment. Does that make sense? Okay. For with God, nothing will be impossible. In the Amplified, it says, For no word of God will be without the power. Will, <laughs> thank you, guys. For <laughs> nothing is ever impossible. No word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. But God gave the testimony of a miracle, and the testimony of a miracle brought faith, yes. helped bring faith to Mary's heart, yes. and Mary received the promise of God, came into agreement with yes. it, because she did not know how she was going to become pregnant, because there was no way. Come on. And so every time that God's about to do a miracle, what's one of the first things that's going to happen? There is no way this is going to happen. Amen. That's a sure sign that God's setting you up for a miracle. Amen. There is no way this is ever going to happen. Oh, wait a minute. With God, all things are possible to him that believeth. Hebrews 3, they could not enter in because of unbelief. Oh, I don't believe that. That's a bunch of poppycock. Boy, that's an old word, isn't it? Yeah. I'm really dating myself. I was going to say horse feathers, but that's also very old. When, when God is coming, there was, uh, I heard Pastor talking to him. He said, uh, they were praying for a child that had a club foot. And, uh, and I think this child was, had the feet bent down and was running backwards on his feet, kind of, calluses on what should be the tops of its foot. And, uh, and God showed up in the miracle and the feet straightened out. It was a small child straightened out and were straight. And one of the ladies in the congregation said, I will take that for my child who was in the nursery that had a foot that I guess was bent out. I will take that for my child. See, one miracle testified to the next miracle and said, I, I'm going to receive that for me. What well, was it? Faith. Yes. You know. And so, sometimes, no, it wasn't exactly the same, but it was the fact that God was moving and faith grabbed a hold of the promise and when she went back to the nursery, her child's feet were perfectly. You say that's impossible. You're right. It's absolutely impossible, but that's exactly what God does. I haven't seen him change a tire yet. Come on. I've seen him heal cars, but, you know. Men do the possible. God does the impossible. What is it about this God of ours? And why does it seem 
to be so crazy. God has a Kairos moment for the fulfillment of every promise. He knows when, but we don't. We don't, but he does. Yes. And he is able to fill the promise that he spoke to you. <laughs> Come on. Because it's not by our ability, it's about his ability. It's not about what we're able to do, it's about what he is able to do. Because Satan is never in charge. He just thinks he is. And as long as we come into agreement with that which is not the Word of God, we put ourselves in a place where we are rejecting the miracle that God wants to do. Oh, Lord, help me. I got a minute and 28 seconds. But you guys turn fast. Isaiah 57 15, right? I, I could spend quite a while on this, but... I want, you to, I want you to see something. This is important. For this is the lie... Hold on. Let me start over again. For thus says the high and lofty one... I was about to say, lie and hofty. <laughs> My dyslexia is showing. Who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. Now, I, I want to tell you that talks to my flesh a lot of times because my spirit is not always on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise they got quiet in here. Somebody else may have. <laughs> to revive the spirit of the humble and to receive the heart of the contrite ones. My time is up. I want you to look at the first part of this verse. The high and lofty one who inhabits eternity. He lives in eternity, not in time. Okay. Oh, man. I got at least three more magazines of ammunition a night. Romans 4, 17. It's just not right to have to hurry through this. It just isn't. Uh, 17, 4, 17. It's talking about Abraham in this passage. And it says this. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. What did he do? He changed his name from Abram to Abraham. What did he say to Abraham? He says, I want you to start speaking that which is not. To come in agreement with your destiny. Yes, amen. Praise God. Yes. Okay. Now, what does God need from us? What does he want from us? He wants faith and obedience. Amen. 
That's what he wants. Amen. And uh, that's what it says in the city. Therefore, it is of faith. <laughs> oh, this is such a rich text. It just can't do justice to it in three minutes. As it is written, I've made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God. So, in the presence of God, Abraham believed. God, who gives life to the dead, can you say amen? And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That's what God does. Amen. So that's what we become involved with. God dwells in eternity. He makes a provision of a word with the power for its fulfillment. And he looks for somebody to say, Lord, I receive that. And you say, but it, it looks impossible. That's a sure sign. Come on. You pray for somebody to get saved and they get worse. And a lot of times they get worse because God starts dealing with them. Yes, amen. And then we try to help them out so they don't suffer so much. And God's trying to get them to the place of repentance and we're trying to keep them from it. Come on! Sometimes you got to pray for people and let God handle. Yes, amen. Sometimes God works more effectively when we're out of the situation than when we're in the situation. Yes, amen. Because He is God, He looks for a people will come into agreement. Yes. Amen. So how many does it take? Caleb and Joshua. <laughs> Moses also believed, but he disobeyed. Come on. Three out of maybe three million? Those are pretty slim odds. But how many of you know they went in? Come on. Yes, amen. Why? Because God saw to it that their faith would be yes. realized yes. by the miracle of being seen. Yes. Amen. Say, so what is Brother Stoll, what is God going to do or how is God going to do it? I don't know. He doesn't tell you that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm supposed to quit. This is wrong. What does God do? He takes you to the Jordan River at flood stage. Not during the drought. Flood stage. What do you do? The priests carry the ark into the water up to their knees. 
And they say, God, we're ready. Did they do that or not? Why did God bring them at flood stage? Why didn't God build them a pontoon bridge? <laughs> Float them across with a helicopter. No, that's not the way. God always does things the hard way. <laughs> he never produces miracles the easy way. It's always the hard way. So God just says to the water, stop right there. And the river starts backing up. Joshua didn't have that in his playbook. <laughs> we follow God into the impossible so that we can see the miracle. Yes. Don't disagree with the word of the Lord. Amen. Just say, I don't understand it. I don't know when, I don't know how, but God, you're going to fulfill your word. Amen. Come on. And I wish I could go to Hebrews 11 right now, real bad, but I can't. I'm out of time. But maybe, maybe uh, 20 minutes plus overtime is enough. So I, I want you to take your promise today instead of killing your promise or accusing. See, we've been praying this prayer over our country. What do we really want? We want a godly nation. We want protection for a godly official. We want them to have wisdom, accountability to the people of the country. We want justice. We want a spirit of unity instead of a spirit of a war. And we want revival in our nation. Uh, is this what we want? Is this what we are praying for? We're going to have to let God fulfill this His way, not our way. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because our hope is not in a person. Our hope is in the God yes. of the eternity who dwells in eternity. Yes. That if necessary, our prayers will go beyond our earthly life into the future. Yes. But we are going to come into agreement in faith just like Abraham did who looked for a city whose builder and maker was God yes. and it will be someday yes. the new Jerusalem Hallelujah. will come Hallelujah. down yes. that's a whale or an RV that God's going to have 1500 miles square mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yes. our faith and our obedience is powerful amen Okay, I reserve the right to rewind and enter this thing again when God tells me to. Okay? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand? I close faster when you all stand up. My headache's gone. Your headache's gone. My headache is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who else has a headache that needs to be Hallelujah. Grab a hold of it right now. There's a miracle. Let's grab the miracle right now. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We thank you for your touch on Chris. And we declare your holiness, your righteousness over our country, over our nation, over everything that we are. 
are in agreement for, and God, according to your word, you will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, it's impossible for you to lie. And Lord, we just come before you right now and we declare that your word is the absolute truth. We come into agreement with your word. Yes. And we ask you to fulfill your word. God, none of us can explain what's going on. But God, we don't have to explain it to see the miracle. Yes, No miracles in this book that I'm aware of got explained. But Lord, you still did the miracles. I don't know how a leper loses his leprosy. I don't know how a blind man opens his eyes or a deaf man opens his ears. But Lord, I know that you're the one that has the power to do it. Yes, God. And Lord, we declare healing and your power and your anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Lord, bless your people this morning. God, just bless them and touch them. Multiply them and make your promises real in their heart. Can you say amen? Amen. Thank you for coming. The altars are open for those of you that would like to come and pray. And if you need prayer, come on down to the front and stand and there will be people here to pray for you.